We are the incubator of culture. We are where bands try it on and try it out. We, were artists, we are where artists show their first works and don't care if they sell. In Secret Project Robot and Mighty Robot Alone, the space I have helped run for the last 15 years, we gave rise to the Yeah Yeahs, TV on the Radio, Black Dice, Animal Collective, <laughs> not to mention the huge bands that had their first big shows in this very room. New Yorkers are always nostalgic for the last generation of the underground scene. But I want to say that we are still here, and now more than ever, we are struggling against the weight of bureaucracy and elitism to try to be a home to those people who need us now just as much as in any other era. The next generation of legends is still coming out to these spaces. It's just harder and harder to run them. Every day we live with the fear of being shut down in community spaces like this for things like dancing. You know, there, there's nothing stopping a landlord from tripling next year's rent by three times. Um, you know, that who here has ever been to a show that was shut down? Who's, right? Am I right? You know, spaces get raided by the March Task Force. Raise your hand if you've loved a space that was wildly popular, but that closed forever in the last couple of years. You know, it's traumatizing. Yes. And it's devastating. Palisades, Don Pedro, Shea Stadium, Death by Audio, 28510, Annoyance Theater, Cameo, Aviv, Body Actualized, Hi Christina. It seems like every day a space is closing and it's happening faster and faster. So MARCH stands for Multi-Agency Response to Community Hotspots. It's basically a, a, ta it's a task force in the mayor's office. And um, there's a lot of controversy surrounding this task force. Um, the big thing about it is that nobody really knows what the guidelines are for how you end up on the MARCH sort of list of places. So MARCH is a uh, made up from the health department up to the state liquor authority to the building department. And they are usually come in um, when they see a venue is becoming a nuisance to the local community. And essentially it, what it is is um, it's a raid. They look for every single license and every single reason on why they should fine or even close the doors of these venues instead of coming in and providing a space where they can have an, a real conversation with the venue owners and operators and say, well, this is what you should be doing and we're going to help you do that, right? Um, I think that that's where the Office of Nightlife comes in. Eventually, uh, mysteriously, Silent Barn ended up getting rolled into the March program, issued us a ton of violations and um, uh, we were like, okay, well, we're going to do some legal research. We'll figure out how to take the next step. And, and while we were not in the space, the space got robbed. We lost uh, many, many tens of thousands of dollars of worth of equipment and a lot of totally priceless art and things like that got destroyed. Uh, and at that point, we realized that we couldn't continue unless we... Um, solicited a lot of financial and emotional support from the community. It sucked. Moving sucked. We finally found a space where you could do shows and also live there legally, which were like our main needs. And we moved in this building and it was a total dump. So we signed a 10 year lease and it's falling apart all the time. This is actually the first space I walked into, the Market Hotel. It was about nine years ago, probably the same year that JTP opened his doors. And I remember walking in here and seeing a diverse group of people here. I saw Latinos, I saw African American kids, I saw white kids, and we were all dancing to the same band and to the same music. And that's just the power that these spaces have, bringing people together, making people feel that they're part of a community. You know, I grew up in a tough place. I grew up in East New York. And my entire life, I, I looked for my way out. And it wasn't until I discovered New York City's nightlife that I really felt that I belonged uh, to a community and, and to the city. So um, 
when I introduced the, the, the bill to create the Office of Nightmare, or the Nightmare uh, I stressed from the beginning, you know, the one thing we have to focus on is bringing the DIY spaces and cultural spaces out of the bureaucratic shadows. And also, we can't forget about our musicians and our workers, the people who help uh, bring in the entertainment into these spaces. We have to look out for them as well. And this office also has to work for them as well. So you have my full support. I, I want to thank Antonio. Antonio's been a great ally in this issue. Part of the reason for Silent Barn, or I think goal, is to be as open as possible to as many new people as possible while still being slightly structured enough that we just don't get continually robbed and you know go bankrupt and I mean the simple strategy for that is just keep the door open as often as possible on the programming aspect of things we really try to be very community oriented and I think that's really important with starting a new space or having a space in an area that's gentrifying quickly or is just being or is has gent been gentrified um, I think it's really important to be able to serve a community and in whatever way they need or is needed. Um, that, that means by serving community, it actually physically means bringing those people in to work with you. I don't want it to be one thing for a set group of people, but I like thinking of the space as a place that multiple people can go to and settle in to experiment with a thing that they want to do. New York, however, takes joy in turning spaces of culture and cultural importance and turning them into condos and high rent chains, leaving behind only urban, urban legend and vacant storefronts. The underground scene is not only important because of the cultural capital it adds to New York City, though it could be argued that this is a huge driver of tourism and economics. It is important because art is something that we as a city and a society have decided matters. But we can't have it both ways. We can't be a city which values art, artists, spaces, and artists, but then put a high-end clothing store in the home of punk rock. We can't say that we think artists are important. We can't say that we think artists are important and then tear down an entire waterfront of studios to put in high-end condos. You have to have a places that um, offer a platform to people who aren't um, necessarily represented. We operate probably at a loss to like give a platform to, to people who are underrepresented, whether that be um, people of color, women, gay people, trans people, like whatever, like all, all those different sort of constituencies are way more prevalent now. You know, I think that uh, the city fails to recognize the contributions that those spaces um, uh, give in, in, in creating the city's identity and, and making New York City one of the best places to, to live and, and be in. Let's get some hands together, gang, for Mr. Curtis Blow. I started out in a small club up in Harlem called Chuck Center. It was a community center. Held 200 people, all ages even. And I was 13 years old, and I, that's where I learned how to break dance. That's where I learned how to b-boy. I, I studied the music that the DJs were playing, and I, I became a DJ right after that. But it happened in these small places that you guys want to say. Places like the Executive Playhouse and the Evolo and the, the Dojo and uh, Club 371, oh my God, the Disco Fever, you know, the Renaissance Ballroom, Harlem World, all of these places are now gone and they're not open anymore. And our kids are suffering by it because we had a way out from all the violence, all of the drugs and the murders and all the things that plague our society today. These kids don't have that out. And I see that you guys are trying to bring it back. And I love you for it and I thank you because hip hop saved my life. And you're gonna save lives of a lot of young people in the future. So thank you and I got your back. Right.